It's Carl Kennedy from The Rods, and you're watching Aftershocks TV. Let's get going here. All right, welcome back to another episode here of Aftershocks TV, right here on the CMS Network. Matt and Tom with you again, as always, for another great episode this week. Tom, how's it going, bud? How you been? How's your week going? Good. Yeah, pretty good, actually. You know, just uh, work's going pretty well. And, you know, it's been another good metal week. Lots of new releases and stuff to talk about. So that's the thing about these shows. It's just a never-ending feed of topics and music oh, yeah. to just shoot the shit on. And that's what we're going to do. Mm -hmm. And when and when we were when there's no more topics to talk about and discuss, we'll be done. But that isn't going to happen. There's just an no. endless amount of, of stuff to discuss. Well, we'll Damn we'll no. pull shit out of our assholes left and right if we need to. You know what I mean? <laughs> Whatever it is, man. Hey, Those we're hey, talking I, metal and, and rock. Yeah. <laughs> hey, listen, I am Irish. You've got Irish blood, so we can talk shit for a generation. So there you go. Yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, it's true. We are talkers. Irish people are talkers. You got it, man. I totally agree. <laughs> All right, Tom. So great, man. Well, let's get. Uh, well, actually, let's get started. We are starting here. Duh, hello. Um, you know, I just was listening to this morning. I was going to work, and I popped on mm. that Rods record. You know that we uh, interviewed Carl Kennedy for last week. Yep. And you know what a good, what a really a, a really solid record, man. You know what got me was that song. Play it, you know, was it play it loud? Yeah. Um, I put it on once, whatever, and then I'm sitting there. I think it was stuck in my head all day mm. long. I mean, I just kept humming to myself, <laughs> even though it's like a very simple, straight to the point, you know, bare basics rock metal song. That's it. Um, three chord type of deal. You know, it just sticks, stuff like that. And it just, you know, it really just made me think of, you know, especially when it comes to rock and metal. It's like a lot of mm. times with, with that, less can be more. Right. I mean, you don't necessarily have to have all these technical chops playing the instrument to come up with great songs. You know, I think sometimes bands or you know artists in general just tend to maybe get carried away with, you know, having to do things more technical and maybe switching this up and doing things differently. Whereas, you know what? You know, music like that. I mean, that good old mm. ACD street, just straight to the, you know, straight bare bones, you know, right to the point type of stuff. I don't know. To me, it always just it hits me. Those are the songs to me that really have that staying power. You know, like mm. you said, it sticks in your head. And you can't get rid of it. I mean, I can't listen to a Dream Theater song and hum that around all day. You know what I mean? I mean, it's just me. Maybe you can, but you know what I mean? It's like so. I I just it was just thinking about that. I was like, you know, I mean, really, you don't necessarily need to have all these technical chops to have some great songs. And no great music, I, and you know, the rods are pretty. You know, yeah. That's it. That, that, first of all, that Rod's album is phenomenal. So I urge everybody to just uh, give it a shot, give it a listen. Uh, obviously, a great interview last week, um, a couple of days ago with Carl Kennedy. So big thanks, um, Matt, to you setting up and Carl for being there and being on time and being interactive. And mm -hmm. we had some uh, good fun in that interview. But you know, to your point about like Dream Theater or or Rush or Symphony X or any of those bands, right? And I, first of all, I'm a huge fan of all of the above. But when I do, I don't play a note, by the way. But I love. I love musicianship. I love going to a concert. I want to see Tool. Actually, I talk about that for just a second. I know what you're going to ask me in a minute, by the way. Um, oh, yeah. I want to see. I want. I want to see Tool uh, just a couple of nights ago in um, okay. in uh, the Spectrum Arena here in Charlotte. So completely sold out show. Twenty thousand people. Uh, I was about fourteen miles back, but I didn't care because mm -hmm. I will say this, and I've been to a lot of gigs. It's one of the best concerts I ever saw. Wow! State show presence. Uh, and it was so funny that, um, uh, you know, they came out and said, okay, turn your phones off, you know, put it down, be engaged. Well, they, did, huh? stay wow. they did, stay with this. And I'll tell you what happened because okay. I was up so high. Nobody took their phones out, like nobody, right? Interesting. And then right at the end, he said, okay, take your fucking phones out, take your stupid devices out. Everybody took them out and filmed the last few minutes. But <laughs> it was one of those concerts because you could look at your phone. I was actually afraid to just in case someone would come and get me, seriously. Um, <laughs> it was an incredible concert. You're going to ask me about Elder. Yeah, so what, what's your report on Elder? I didn't see him. Oh, Tom. <laughs> you got to be kidding me. I No, I didn't, and I tried my damnedest to get there in time, but what I did do is hear him, like, literally the last minute. As I okay. like, Obviously, it's a circular arena, so I was walking around. I was in Section 228, I remember, and kind of walked in at Section 110, so I could okay. walk around the entire arena 
to get to my sanction. And when I get there, mm. they were done. They walked off stage. So I heard oh, them, shit. but I didn't mm. see them. So I got nothing on that. But the Tool concert was uh, it was immense. Look, it was fantastic. All right. Well, anyone out there that's going to see Tool, don't do what Tom did. Okay. No, get there early. Show, show up early and catch Elder. You won't ass. be disappointed. You won't be disappointed. What a dumb and I thought well, you should. Said it. I, I went before you go. Just well, I said I said Matt's going to kick my ass because he wanted me to come back with. Uh, some updates but sorry just just back to the topic at hand we're talking about dream yeah. theater rush mm-hmm. symphony x whatever so there's mm-hmm. two arguments here one i don't want to see dream theater or symphony x do something simple i want to go and see that you know point. musicianship mm-hmm. and the 11 minute songs and that whatever but then but then going back to your point you don't need that for a great song you take acdc now the difference with acdc is that a couple of bands i'm going to discuss is what what people tend to forget is they're incredible musicians. You might think that Phil Rudd doesn't do a whole lot, but God damn, he's an oh, incredible he drummer. Cliff mm-hmm. Williams, he just holds that bass line, never misses a beat. You know, Malcolm, arguably the greatest rhythm guitar player mm-hmm. pretty much of all time. And then Angus Young is Angus Young. Um, but um, that's ACDC. But then you take bands like Kiss, mm-hmm. Motley, right? Uh, none, of those, none of those eight musicians I just mentioned right there are – but maybe Tommy Lee is an, a, an excellent drummer, but the rest of the kids are not good musicians. They're no. decent musicians, right? Okay. And they yeah. will, and they will tell you that. Mm-hmm. Motley is certainly not, with the exception, I guess, of maybe Mick Mars is underrated, but Tommy Lee is is probably the best. He's proficient, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's he's decent. And um, oh, yeah. or you take mm-hmm. a band like Poison, right? I'm not a huge Poison fan, but they're they're not they're not good musicians. There's nobody in there, yeah, exactly. Nobody no, no. is screaming. No, I no, mean, no, Ricky Rock and Bobby Doll. CC can pl- I've seen him kind of rip on the guitar. He's not so yeah. bad if he does some leads, but his rhythm, not my favorite. But anyway, no, yeah. it's okay. Mm-hmm. And then LA Guns bands like that, they're all kind of simple songs. Again, not good. Sure. Even, even mm-hmm. well, obviously, it's easy to kind of pick on 80s rock and bubblegum rock. But you take somebody mm-hmm. like the Sex Pistols, right? We're going back to 76, 77, 78. Mm-hmm. Okay. I mm-hmm. mean, nobody ever, nobody ever looked at Sid Vicious and go, well, he's going to give Giddy Lee a run for his money because they were <laughs> arguably awful mm. musicians. Oh, yeah. But they had, they had mm-hmm. catchy songs and they're, they're famous today mm. because of those songs. So you That's don't right. need to be Symphony X or whoever, but you can, you can be very average and have good songs. And Kiss are a prime example of that. They're yeah. very, very average musicians. Peter Chris is arguably a, a terrible musician. Average to poor, I would say, even in Peter Chris. But there's a band that sold 100 million records. So who, did, what, what do they care? What I think. But I think it's a great topic, and it's uh, you can dance around that for a little bit and kind of see where you go with it. Yeah, no, and uh, you know, I mean, I think every genre, subgenre, whatever you want to call it, really needs to have one of those bands. Mm-hmm. Or, oh, and they usually do have one of those bands, at least right. one. You know, um, you know, Fu Manchu was another great band. Very simple. Sure. I mean, they they get a, a riff and they ride in that thing all song. And for some reason, it comes out being great. You know, I mean, I mean, a lot of it has to go, of course, go tone, right? Tone is, is I think, one of the most underrated mm-hmm. things as well. You've got, if you've got that solid tone in a production, like we hear on the Rods record, you know, it's a great produced record, as we great talked produced. about with Carl last week with Chris Collier. That, uh, you know, those songs, because they're so well, you know, produced and, and the tone is so thick and so just bam mm. in your face that's what gives it that power where it doesn't need to like you said you don't need to see it be, have it be a, an ingve up there doing some technical yeah. maestro type of you know whatever on the guitar you, you could just write out with a i mean obviously you know in terms of the lyrics now too right you need those that, mm. that good catchy hook or the chorus that really just sticks that you're gonna hum around singing all day and I, that's usually to me where are these great? I mean, if you look at, I mean, some of the best songs in the history of, or most popular songs in the history of rock and metal, they're all usually just these catchy songs. Like you named, mm-hmm. like I said, you named a whole bunch of the '80s bands. They're all known for that. Obviously, you said ACDC. You know, never did anything over the top. I mean, shook me all night long. I mean, stuff like that. Like you said great songs. I'm not saying it's um, you know easy to play, but it's just straight to the point. Three to four minutes tops. Boom gets yep. the job done and move on to the next song. And I think um, that's just something that, like I said, you know, a lot of that has to do with the fun too. And we're going to talk a little bit about that later in the show mm. about the fun and mellow and rock and sort of what's kind of happened over the years to some of that. But um, yeah, so it's, it's just, you know, like I said, it's just a topic, something I want to bring up because yeah, like we've said, you, yeah mm-hmm. you, don't, you don't need to be, and it's just, even for, for now young musicians coming up because these days, as we see, there's 
me and Bob Nalbanya did a, uh, a, an episode for Skull Sessions probably about three years ago or so with a couple of guys he knew from L.A. One of the guys that was, was from Sound Barrier, and there was another mm-hmm. guy. And they opened sort of this sort of school, and it was basically to teach these because they said there's great musicians out now young young kids that can play i mean you see them all over youtube they're they're shredding like crazy but they don't know how to get into a room with each other and yeah. play with each other yeah. and come together and write songs it's just so used to doing it on their camera right here getting on there recording these videos they get enough um you know attention and enough notoriety through youtube where to them, it's like, I don't, I don't want to sit there and, and sit in a room with these three people I don't know and play songs. I could just either do covers or I could come up with some of my own creative stuff. There was this guy, Nick Nocturnal, I'm sure um, you've seen him. Hmm? I th- I believe uh, he's been interviewed on the CMS Network. I believe Chris Aiken interviewed him a couple of years ago, too. And he's just a guy, yeah, he gets like a million views for like all his, basically all his... Uh, Every episode he puts up, or every video, I should say, he puts up in that episode, every track, he'll he'll go ahead and say, all right, we're going to take, you know, some metalcore band, and we're going to put a little of this in, and, and he doesn't look sort of like, I, I don't know if you ever, have you ever seen that guy, Nick Nocturnal? Have you checked I've him out I've seen it, yeah. Mm-hmm. You have? Okay, so you know what I'm talking about then. So, and, and that's what I think the, a lot of these younger, you know, musicians are doing, instead of just going, hey, let's just get a couple of us in a room, put together, you know, three chord you know, your, your standard sort of, you know, song where you have, you know, verse, chorus, verse, chorus, bridge, verse, chorus, break out, or whatever it is, you know, and they just don't know how to do that. And if they would just, I think, go back to basics and stop worrying about, I, I've got to be this technical whiz and show off on YouTube and compete with everyone, I think the future of rock and metal would be looking pretty good, which I don't think it is right now. I mean, there, there's great music out there, don't be wrong, I'm not trying to sure. sound all doom and gloom here, but... I just think that there'd be a lot more replenishing of these older bands, and we'll get to a band I know you want to bring up in a little bit, speaking about a band mm-hmm. that's having sort of reunion. We wouldn't have to worry about going back 20, 30 years trying to get bands to reunite, getting them paid a lot of money and come back and play old songs for us instead of, you know, re- they, we need to replenish rock and metal with the young generation. And so I wish a lot of these kids would just take a page out of the rods. I mean, like a band like Dirty Honey. I mean, they're a younger band. They yeah, do something like that, right? Great mm-hmm. band. And I just wish more bands would kind of get into more of that. But you, but you know, take uh, one of the biggest you know. bands ever, I guess, in rock and metal was Def Leppard. Are, are any of Def yeah. Leppard great musicians? I mean, That's Phil Collins is a great player, but he's not Joe Satriani. Nah, I mean, none of them you know, are. Steve Clark, you know, Steve Rick Clark Allen, was whatever. Good. Yeah, I mean, yeah, Steve Clark, I mean, as a rhythm player, and he, I mean, I heard something recently on the Decibel Geek uh, podcast, and they were talking about, you know, um, they kind of celebrate, celebrate, wrong word, but they talk about like anniversaries of, of rock stars who passed mm-hmm. on the week that they're doing the show. And he said, if you take Steve Clark, Steve Clark's contribution to Def Leppard, look at the look at the three albums before he died, and look at the three albums after oh. he died and see what they, I said, that was a great, great point right there. Yeah, but, you know, ahead. he was never a lead player. Obviously, he was a rhythm player and he was cool and he wrote the songs. But Def Leppard are arguably one of the biggest rock and metal bands. They have two diamond albums. That's two ten million, do- two yeah, ten wow. million, two million sell- sellers. Um, mm-hmm. I don't see, none of those are virtuosos. As good as Phil Collin is, he's not a Joe Satchez, Steve I, Paul Gilbert. He's not that. But look at them and their album mm-hmm. sales. So you don't have to be dexterous and coordinated and 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 you know be a symphony x to, to do that there's room for both that's the thing we're not saying one yes. is better than the other we're mm-hmm. just having a discussion about you don't have to be one or the other to be a success mm-hmm. you know and, and then in metal you know you see a lot of these bands i i feel like you know i'm, I'm trying not trying to sound all outdating myself here but i just every time i hear it could be a sleep token band it could be one of these newer mm-hmm. metal bands I just hear like, and a lot of it's just because of the digital recordings that are out there. You know, everything's yeah. recorded digitally, so it all sounds the same. Um, because what I hear is just the same tones on that guitar. It's the down tune guitar with, you know, mm. sort of like that metal core sound, like that Meshuggah type of stuff. Sure. I mean, I, f- I feel like once Meshuggah came along and came with that gent side of angle of, of music with, with metal, it's just like nothing new has come since then. Yeah. You know, and like I said, I think we just like like in anything when things get I think all fucked up like that, mm-hmm. it, the best thing to do is just go back to basics. You know, I mean, Metallica. Yeah. Look what they did on this on this last album. They went back to basics. They kept it simple. You know, just great riffs. You know, Headfield just doing his thing. 
simple beats, you know, simple rhythms, not the best leads, as I said. Um, but, but there's but, another band, though. I mean, there's a prime example of who's the who's a with the exception, I guess, of James Hetfield, who's a phenomenal rhythm guitar. He's phenomenal, player, yes. Right, mm-hmm. and his right hand is unbelievable. Which which of those? I mean, obviously, you know, Trujillo when he came in later and you said whatever, are and arguably, you know, going back on the bass line, the bass lineage, um, they've, they've been pretty solid. But I mean, Lars and and Kirk Hammett. They're not great players, and they're and they're probably as big as you two right now. So we could we could talk about this all night long. Oh, and you choose. We're not, we're not looking. No, we're not looking no. to make a point here. We're just saying it's just it is what it is, you know. Yeah, it is. It is. It's just yeah, like you said, just sim- simple. Sometimes the the more simple it is, the better it is. That's what we're saying. Yep. But like you said, there is room for both. There's always going to be room for sure. both. But I just I feel like there just isn't that much simple stuff anymore. I wish there was a little bit more. Simple, straightforward rock and roll that we'd have out mm-hmm. there, you know? So anyway. Yep. All right. So, yeah, we got – I know there's a lot of – of course, as always, a lot of news going on in rock and metal. Uh, fill us in, Tom. Give us uh, what, what you got for this week. Uh, just a couple of new releases. Some stuff came out the last day, day or two. Obviously, the new Bruce Dickinson song dropped. Um, I think it was yesterday, if okay. I'm not mistaken. Um, and I'm not loving this one. I love really? the first okay. one. Second, I mean, it's a good song. I have to kind of sit on it for a little bit. And I think what kind of what hurt me a little bit on it is that he's singing too high in the courses. And it's not mm, that he okay. can't sing it because he can. He just doesn't need to. So he's just mm. going too high. Kind of pissed me off a little bit. A couple of new Scott Stapp songs dropped that I don't know. I know he's a kind we're going to talk about, I think, a little bit of Creed tonight. But I, I like his solo stuff. I think his solo stuff gets completely overlooked simply because he's with Creed. And we're going to talk about that sure. a little bit. Mm-hmm. But his, um, his, um, I like his, his last solo album. I can't remember the name of it, but his previous one was really good. First one was a solid release. And the four songs, the five, whatever it is on the new one uh, so far are hitting the mark for me. And new Mick Mars mm-hmm. dropped. Uh, he's on his third track yes. of his latest release. So that's up and coming. But um, yeah, this that's uh, good. And it, couple of tours that's been announced again we can't go through every single piece of news i get that sure. but that's just some of the highlights for this week but a lot going on my friend yeah you know and there's also some a lot of concert cancellations that are happening mm. uh this week obviously metal church had to cancel saw that their tour uh i guess kurt vanderhoof's um yep. got some mm-hmm. back issues so he's just shutting it down until that gets sure. uh taken care of at the gates, another band I had to cancel their tour. Sweden, yeah, as well. Um, and you know, I'm not a fan, really big, big fan of this guy, but Corey Taylor, uh, another one canceled mm. all of his. Saw that. Which, well, I, I, actually, I think he's now scheduling a few of them. The Asian Asian tours, I guess he's doing a couple of them. But, okay. but it's one of those things where just over the last year or so, we're seeing a lot of cancellations. I mean, some of them look some like Kurt Vanderhoof. He's just an older guy. That's you know what I mean? Issue, yeah. yeah, it's a health thing. Um, but some of the other ones, I'm not sure about at the gates. They didn't really give any, you know, any reason. Corey Taylor's had to do more with his mental health, supposedly. Yeah. Whatever it may be. But yeah, there's uh, unfortunately some concert cancellations, uh, going on right now. But, uh, at the same time, we've got a lot of concerts that are being scheduled a ton, ton of touring. Yeah. Going on, I mean, you know, I think it's, I, I know a lot of bands, they cancel a lot of us bands cancel european tours because of the pure logistics of getting from yes. here to europe you know and mm. i can i can understand that but it's a little bit hard to not understand but it's it's obviously cost related it's all to do with money they're not making enough money or sure. it's costing too much and not breaking even whatever and who's going to do a job to break even you got to make some money on this i get it Absolutely. um but it has to be just down to fuel costs and hotel costs and travel and hiring a bus and tour managers and whatever it is but uh, and it's unfortunate that um you know we as fans don't get to see it but if a you got to think that if a band for the most part are are canceling a tour there's a good reason for that whatever the pr mm-hmm. says i get it they have to release something but there's probably a good reason for that that they do and it's unfortunate for them it's unfortunate for us the venues don't get the capacity crowd whatever it is so it's a, it can become a bit of a shit show but then conversely there's a lot of bands still on tour new um I think Cattle Decapitation announced a tour today, yes. if I saw that. I can't remember the full lineup mm-hmm. on that, but I know they saw something quickly on Blabbermouth. So there's still tours happening, but you know, but you got to, mm-hmm. here's what I see. No, nobody can go to every single show that comes through the town because, first yeah. of all, it's a lot of time, it's a lot of money, parking, driving, whatever. So I get mm-hmm. it. But I just tried to, I tried to get to, um, 
who I can, when I can. And that tool was number one of the year for me. So I'm just happy I just checked the box because sometimes it's easier not to go. Sometimes mm-hmm. I have a ticket for a concert. I go, fuck, I said, the weather's bad. It's going to take me 45 minutes to get there. Why did I, why did I buy that ticket? I wonder if I could sell it. I get really lazy. And then, mm-hmm. I, and then I go and I never regret going. I don't say, what well, I'm so sorry I went to see that. So Yeah, uh, that next, is a good, yeah. Yeah, you know? No, I was going to say, that's a good point. You know, I've done that too where it's like, you get to, the, I mean, I, I guess it's just us getting old, but you, you, you just oh, yeah. get kind of lazy. Like, oh man, well, I, I bought tickets that. Why didn't I just wait? And then you <laughs> force yourself to go. But you know how it is. Every time you do push yourself to go out, you have a good time. Uh, it's always I mean, good. it's very rare that it's like, yeah, see, I, I shouldn't have gone. I mean, I mm-hmm. always like, I thank God I, I went and I pushed myself because, uh, and like you said, that's actually a really good point bringing up that you can't, that is probably the most difficult, I think, thing, you know, really the thing about touring and going to see shows is like you said, we you can't see them all. No. You know, I mean, when we were younger in our 20s, yeah, we could, we could hit up a few a week, you know, if we, if we had to, you know, but these days, not not even really just because of the, the cost of it. It's just, it's just, it's not easy to get to. I think most most of us, you know, live like you said, a little bit outside of mm. the areas where these shows are being held. I mean, I, even though I live literally right across the the bridge here, I'm right on the the bay and right across to San Francisco. It, it's still because of traffic and everything. It's still thirty plus minutes, probably yep. forty minutes, forty five easily, I should say. Um, and then if I'm going to have some drink, you know, I'm the kind of guy I like to go to a show. I, I, I like to let loose, you know, so I like to like not really sit there and go, oh, I had a, a, two drinks. I probably shouldn't have any more. <laughs> so a lot of times I'll just Uber it. If, if it's a band, I love I'll Uber it. You know, if it's a band I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm on the fence about, I'm okay with, I'll drive then because it's not that big a deal, but yeah, I depend just to get an Uber and just let it, let the night take me where it goes. So I don't have to worry about any of the driving, oh. but that adds up too. I mean, everything adds up. You know, you. I want to buy obviously merch. Uh, you know, so next thing you know, it's like you're a couple hundred bucks in a hole for even a small show yeah. in, in a smaller club. You know, but it's, I, I mean, I went to the tool gig and I had one beer. One, I drove in because about okay. thirty miles away. Whenever I had one beer and it was seventeen dollars for oh, one whoa. beer. Now I the beer was one of the big cans, you know, like the oversized cans, but it was seventeen bucks. But that can is probably, I don't know. 250 or whatever it is in my local um liquor store yeah. oh, or a supermarket it was 17 dollars for one beer what kind of beer me- was that what kind of beer was modelo it? It was a i remember modelo, exactly geez. what it was modelo which is a good beer uh, it is a good beer 17 bucks so i said right i'll have one. i wanted one just to sit there and it's like sure. a you know pint and a half or whatever just to relax and just watch the gig and mm-hmm. but there's no way am i pay am i going to go up and have a second beer i think and then parking cost me 13 dollars, which is not awful so that was thirty dollars on top of the concert ticket, which I think was about eighty, seventy five, eighty, mm. which wasn't awful for an arena band, I guess. Um, but still, it's one hundred, you know, one hundred ten, one hundred twenty dollars just on for two hours out. So go figure, mm-hmm. you know. But yeah. it is what it is. That's what we got to do. Don't go if you don't want to pay the price. I get it, but. Hmm. Yeah. No, you're right. It's um, like you said. It's it's, but it is. I think it's difficult. I don't know about for you. Because, you know, there's so many bands, obviously, that go through, you know, Charlotte, too. So it's like, but when, when you get a lot of bands come, it's really just hard to delineate which ones you're going to see and which ones you're going to pass on. You know, and that's really, the mm-hmm. I think, the hardest, you know, thing to do. And it seems, I don't know about you, but it seems to me, whenever these shows are coming to town, they're always around the same time. Like, yeah. I'll, I'll, like right now, there's been about a good three months or so where there hasn't been that much going on here. But it's all going to start in March. That's all going to change. And then from March until June, there's just a ton of stuff. Yeah, summer season. Yeah. You know, and it's just like, so it's one of those where it's like, yeah, you have to kind of choose wisely. And it's hard to, you know, obviously I'll choose the bands that don't come around often. I'll, I'll, I'll do or the bands I really, really love. I'll never miss those bands. But, you know, some of the other ones, it's like you got to kind of, you know, pick and choose. And that's that's a tough thing. Sometimes that's not easy to do, but. 